من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا حبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا يطب بعدكم بعدا ايحب احدكم ان ياكل لحم اخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله ان الله تواب رحيم my brothers and my sisters i've recited from surah hujurat Surah Hujarat is a very beautiful surah that I recommend all of you to go and read again and again. This surah outlines our interpersonal relationship. How we should deal with one another, what kind of relationship we should have with one another. Allah Azza wa Jal in this beautiful surah outlines the rules of interpersonal relationship. <laughs> and I don't want to cover all those rules today. I want to cover one such rule. It's called backbiting. It's called backbiting. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Wala yahtab," and don't speak bad about your brother or your sister behind their back. Then he says, "Ayyuhubu ahaduku man yakul lahma ki maithun." Would you like to eat the meat of your brother who's dead? Fakarih tumuhu. Surely you will loathe it. You will hate it. Wa taqo Allah. Inna Allah tawabu rahim. And be conscious of Allah. Verily, Allah is accepter, all repentance, and giver of grace. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, it may be just a word. It may be just a fleeting remark. It may be just a, a throwaway sentence. Yet the profound impact of what we say with our words, with our tongue, often isn't fully realized by people. We say things without thinking. One word could take you from the height of achievement. to the total destruction and one word could take you from total destruction to height of achievement such word could consign you to hell head first this evil is called backbite prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a person might speak a word without thinking without thinking about its implication but because of it he or she will be plunged in the hell fire the distance between the east and the west would be the depth of the hell fire a person utters a word whereby he or she describes another person in a negative way either explicitly or implicitly it plunges the speaker into clear and evident loss and what could be greater loss my brothers and sisters than for a person to say something that does not do anything good for that person except that it robs him of the blessings of Allah in this world and in the hereafter what could be greater loss than you turning up on the day of judgment and you are told because you've been backbiting your destiny is hell fire a muslim utters a small word with his word with his mouth without thinking this becomes a terrible a terrible reckoning on the day of judgment prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to muad ibn jabal for muad shall i inform you of some good work that would admit you to paradise 
and the distance between you and hellfire would be huge. Mu'ad said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, please tell me. Shall I inform you of the foundation of all of that, O Mu'ad? Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'ad, Mu'ad said, Ya Rasulullah, please tell me, certainly. Prophet ﷺ said, firstly, he held his tongue, took it out, and held it, and he said, restrain yourself from this. He said, guarantee your tongue. Allah will guarantee you paradise. Control your tongue. Allah will make hell haram on you. My brothers and sisters, Prophet <coughs> then said, Oh Mu'ad, may your mother be bereaved over you. Oh Mu'ad, does anything people, does anything topple people headlong into hellfire except what they say with their tongue? Oh Mu'ad, do you know? Nothing in the world would throw people in the hellfire with their head first, except what they say with their tongue. My brothers and sisters, we've all been victims of backbiting. What is backbiting, you may be asking? Backbiting is to speak about your brother or your sister behind their back, even if it is true. And if it is false, it becomes a slander. Ghiba is backbiting. Speaking behind your brother or your sisters behind, even if it is true. And when you slander, it becomes namima. You have made up a false allegation about your brother or your sister behind their back. Both of them are like eating the flesh of your dead brother. Would you like to eat the meat of your dead brother? No, you wouldn't. And yet, we don't think before we speak. We don't think before we say anything. I remember once I came across a very sad story. A big imam of a big mosque was backbiting me. Me as a person. When I saw him next time, I grabbed him, took him to the side, privately in his ears, whispered, Sheikh, I heard you've been backbiting about me. He said, what did you say? Well, who said what? I said, I heard you've been talking about me negatively behind my back. Sheikh, you have got my number. You've got my email address. You even know where I live. You could have easily picked up the phone and asked me first. But you didn't do that. You spoke behind my back. You could be the grand sheikh of this mosque, but you're backbiting. He looked at me. And he said, well, I was warning people about you. Some of your opinions are not good. He said, I said, even if my opinions are not good, you should have picked up the phone and spoken to me first. You didn't do that. It's still backbiting, Sheikh. And I reminded him the verse of the Quran. Allah Azza wa says, and don't backbite. Because he's learned, because he's knowledgeable, he paused and he looked at me. And he started crying. He hugged me and apologized. And he said to me, I will never backbite again. Please forgive me. I said, may Allah forgive us all. But Shaykh, don't backbite. For backbiting is very disastrous and dangerous. I remember one brother after when I was going to Jum'ah one day, he came to me and he stopped me and he said to me, brother, can I talk to you? I said, sure. I've only got 30 seconds because I've got to go to Jum'ah. I'm leading the Jum'ah today. He goes, yes, it's not going to take long. He said, I'm about to go to have a heart bypass surgery. I'm going to the doctors. In fact, I was in the hospital earlier on during the day. And I asked my doctor to allow me to come to the Jum'ah and speak to you because I don't know whether I will ever be able to come back and speak to you again. What if I don't make it? I would like to ask you to forgive me. I've been backbiting and slandering about you for the last five years. What do I say to him? What do I say to him? I looked at him and I said, I'm, I'm really sorry that you've been backbiting about me. Some part of my brain says to me, don't forgive you. My brain tells me, don't forgive this man. He's been an evil man. Character assassinating you all over the place for the last five years. But there is a part of me which says, forgive him. Allah will forgive him and Allah will forgive you. So I forgave him. I said, may Allah forgive you. May Allah give you shifa and come back in one piece, inshallah, after 
your operation. My brothers and sisters, I get this very often because I'm a public figure. I'm an imam, I speak from Jum'ah, I speak from pulpit, pulpit, and some people don't like some things that I say, and when I've left, they speak behind me, about me with others negatively. And then, later on, when they realize that they've made a mistake, they come and apologize. So I get it very regularly, don't worry. I get it very regularly. But there's a good thing scholars have told us. If somebody backbites, give them a bunch of flowers because they've done a favor to you. They've added hasanat, good deeds, to your record. The more they backbite, the more good deeds are added to your records. The more backbites about you, the more Allah adds good deeds to your record. And the more they backbite, the more they guarantee a place for themselves in hellfire. My brothers and sisters, backbiting is evil. Backbiting is evil. You choose to backbite. You could choose not to backbite. You should choose not to speak behind someone's back, especially if it is negative. You don't like something about somebody, go and tell him I don't like this about you. Tell him on their face, but privately don't humiliate them in public. You backbite and you think you're pious, your piety is destroyed when you're backbiting. You've just prayed and you're backbiting, your prayer will be lightened. What's the point of praying if you have guaranteed yourself a place in hellfire? What good will the prayer do when you've been backbiting about your brothers and your sisters? My brothers and sisters, our beloved Prophet of Allah وسلم, was a victim of backbiting and slander and gossip. When against his wife, the story was spread that she had an illicit relationship with somebody else. When Prophet ﷺ heard the whispering and the backbiting behind him, it got to his heart. It affected him. It moved his heart. He went home and he said to his own wife, O oh, Aisha, I am asking you to go back to your father's house until Allah clarifies about your character. Aisha said in a saying, I felt like the earth had moved from under my feet. I felt like, Ya Allah, please open up this earth so that I can be swallowed instead of living anymore. My husband, your prophet of Allah, has doubts about my character. Oh Allah, please open up this earth and let me disappear. I went back to my father's house and I waited and I waited and I waited. With pain and anguish, I waited because I knew I was innocent. And I knew people were spreading hypocrites, the munafiqeen were spreading lies about me. And I knew good Muslims were being affected by the backbite of Islam. I knew people's hearts were being affected. So I was waiting and I was waiting and I was waiting. When one day Rasul came and knocked on my door, at my father's door, and he asked for me. And I said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. Prophet said, Oh Aisha, I've come to tell you that it's over. You don't need to worry about it anymore. Aisha, you innocent. You know what Aisha said? Ya Rasulullah, is this from your kind self or was that a revelation from Allah confirming my character? Prophet said, Ya Aisha, Allah has revealed the verse to confirm that you are innocent, O oh Aisha. So when you backbite about your brother or your sister, don't you think it hurts? When you backbite about me, don't you think it hurts when I hear about it afterward? Of course it does. If you disagree with me, talk to me. I'm not going anywhere. If you disagree with your brother, talk to him or talk to her. Don't talk behind their back. For talking behind their back, you are guaranteeing yourself a space in the hellfire. Don't talk behind someone's back negatively. If you want to talk, talk good about them. Praise them. Praise them behind their back. Advise them in front of them. Prophet's advice is very beautiful. There are three immediate things you should do, my brothers and sisters. Number one, make a promise today. In this masjid, with Allah as your witness, on the day of Jum'ah, sitting on the Musalla, on the blessed day of Jum'ah, that I promise from today, I will never backbite again. Make that promise to yourself. I will never backbite again. Make that promise to yourself today. My brothers and sisters, and watch yourself closely. 
Watch yourself closely. Be careful. For what you give from your mouth, when it's released, you can't take it back. You can apologize, but the word has already come out. Don't talk behind the back of any brother or any sister negatively. If you have done that, go and apologize to them immediately. Go and apologize, say, my brother, my sister, please forgive me. I've been backbiting about you. Anyone who backbites should be challenged politely and privately. Remind them backbiting is wrong, it's destructive, and it's extremely cowardly. It's extremely cowardly. You don't have the guts to speak to that person and you speak behind their back, you're a coward, you're a coward, you're a coward. Don't speak behind anyone's back ill. And you should refuse to listen to anyone backbiting. Tell them, I'm sorry, I don't want to listen. When a woman came to see Rasulullah, she was short, she was short. Aisha made a remark about her height. What did Rasulullah say? Yeah, ya Aisha, you have just backbitten. Ya Aisha, you have just done ghibah. Ya Rasulullah, but that's true. Prophet said, it is still backbiting. It is disparaging. It is negative. It is intended to be negative. You are commenting about her height as short, not a fact, as an observation. My brothers and sisters, you can backbite by eyes. You can backbite by body language. You can backbite by fleeting remarks. You can backbite by making jokes. You can make backbiting a ha habit and you must end it now. We must end backbiting now. Otherwise, we'll all be in trouble in this world and in the hereafter. May Allah forgive us, strengthen us in our Iman and prevent us all from backbiting and increase our love for one another. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa laqibatul muttaqeen wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all human beings. We're all human. We make mistakes. Your role to correct me is a brotherly right I have over you. If I do something wrong, you should help me so that I don't go to hellfire. But how do you correct me? There is also a method to correcting my bad behavior. The method is take me aside in a private space. And talk to me politely, remind me, help me, and don't kick me when I'm on the floor. If you see something wrong with a brother or a sister, you want to correct them, do it privately and politely. Privately and politely. Don't humiliate them in public. Don't scream and shout at them. I remember a few weeks back when I was in a masjid, when brother started screaming and shouting at me, I allowed him to scream and shout for a few minutes. Once he finished, I gave him a hug. I said, you must have a problem. We can disagree, but we still can be brothers. We can disagree. You may not like everything that I say. That's okay. No problem. Alhamdulillah. The fact that you're thinking is amazing. The fact that you've thought about what I've said and you've come to a conclusion that you don't like what I'm saying is brilliant. It shows that you love me. It shows that you care about me. It shows that you are sensitive to what I say, Alhamdulillah. But if you want to correct me, do it privately. Don't backbite. Don't speak about one another behind. Did you see his trousers? Did you see his shirt? Did you see his beard? Did you see his hat? Did you see this? Did you see that? Backbiting. That's backbiting. And love between the believers disappears when you backbite. And love between the believers will give you shade on the Day of Judgment when there will be no shade. When there will be no shade on the Day of Judgment, if you love one another for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you shade. If you truly love me, why are you backbiting about me? If you truly love my brothers and sisters, why are you backbiting about one another? My brothers and sisters, I tell you, 
90% of your problems, 90% of our community's problems will disappear if we stop backbiting. 90% of our interpersonal problems will disappear if you make a promise that you'll never backbite from today. Never backbite from today. If we all took that responsibility, I tell my children, sharply, that's backbiting, don't backbite. Even if it is true. But that it is true, yes, but it's backbiting. If you want to say, go and say it to them directly. My brothers and sisters, we love one another for the sake of Allah. Our unity is based on our love. Our unity is based on our belief in Allah. And our love for Allah and our love for Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our unity is not based because you're Hanafi and I'm Maliki, you're Shafi'i and he's Hanbali. No! That is not your unity. Your unity is because you say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And let that be the point of unity for all of us. And let us all make that promise that we will love one another even if we disagree. We will love one another even if we disagree. We will love one another even if we disagree. We we disagree. And we will never back. Make that promise again and again. There should be a massive sign in the masjid. Don't backbite. As a reminder. There should be a, pho a reminder on your phone. Keep on popping up. I, I, I hope somebody can create an app which says, every time you backbite it, bleep saying you backbite. We'll do very well. Finally, my brothers and sisters, keep a notebook and write down the number of times you've back been backbiting today. And tomorrow, keep a diary of a month's backbiting and you'll see what happens to you and your conscience. We believe in Allah, we believe on the Day of Judgment will be accountable. And if we believe in Allah and on the Day of Judgment will be accountable, why backbite? Why backbite when Allah says, Allah Akbar, whenever I read this verse, I want to cry. Will you? And don't backbite against one another. Would you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? No, you'd hate it. Why do you backbite? Allah is telling you and I, it is like eating the flesh of your dead brother. So today's reminder for me is not to backbite ever again. May Allah make us a people who don't backbite. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin, enable us so that we can take, uh, take control of our tongues, Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, help us so that we don't backbite again, Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, help us to keep our promise so that we don't backbite ever again, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, increase our love for one another, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, increase our love for each other, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, restore peace and stability in our community, Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah Rahimin, bring our hearts together, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, remove fitna from ourselves, Ya Allah. Remove the whispers of shaitan from ourselves, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, strengthen us, Ya Allah. Strengthen us, Ya Allah. Strengthen us, Ya Allah. Protect us, Ya Allah. Protect us, Ya Allah. Have mercy on us, Ya Allah. Forgive us for our mistakes, Ya Allah. Forgive us for our mistakes, Ya Allah. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta sabil alim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fi al-akhirat hasana. Wa khina adab al-naw. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Wa illa mtaqfir lana. Wa tarhamna. Lana kuna min al-khasirin. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana. Ba'da ilhalaytana. Wa hab lana min ladun ka rahma. Inna kanta al-wahab. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أفرض علينا صبرا وصبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين واحفزنا من الظالمين واحفزنا من الظالمين واحفزنا من الظالمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنهاء الفحشاء والمنكر البغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروا لي أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة